Hey everyone, it's Shantae from Just How I Plant It. And if you're anything like me, you are sick and tired of these fungus gnats, okay? I'm tired of having a conversation with my husband and having to go like this. Like, I look crazy. They're so annoying. They're always in your face. They don't care about personal space. And I'm tired of it, okay? So we are getting rid of fungus gnats today. So, I am pulling out all the stops, okay? Because they got to go. They don't pay no rent up in here. And I just, I have so many plants. And I'm not about to get rid of my plants. So, if somebody's got to go, it is the fungus gnats. And so, I have 11 ways <laughs> to get rid of fungus gnats. And I'm using all of them, okay? Or some of them or whatever, like I'm gonna share with you all of my tips, all the things that I will be doing to get rid of these fungus gnats, but you have to be consistent and your girl is not really always consistent, so I need to be better, but I am starting today. I have to get rid of these fungus gnats. They have a two week uh, life cycle, so at least for two weeks, I need to be on my grind, doing everything I need to do consistently to make sure that they are gone. I need to kill off the babies. I need to make sure they don't mature. Not kill off the babies, but kill off the uh, mature ones and make sure that they cannot reproduce and start to cycle all over again. So we're about to get into it. The 11 tips to get rid of fungus gnats for good, forever. Goodbye. My first tip is to go soilless. Okay, so fungus gnats love to live in moist soil. They like to live in uh, the soil and eat the inorganic particles or the organic particles in your soil. Um, and if you don't have any soil, they have nowhere to live. Okay, so they have to vacate <laughs> the premises. So first step is to go soilless. The second tip I have to get rid of fungus gnats is, did I say naps? Naps? Oh girl, I'm tired. The second tip I have to get rid of fungus gnats is to bottom water your plant. So you can simply place your plant in a, um, a bowl or something and put the water in there and allow the plant to absorb the uh, water. So fungus gnats like to place, um, lay their eggs in the first two inches of the soil so when you bottom water you allow the first um, layer of the soil to remain dry which is uncomfortable for fungus gnats they do not want to they do not want to lay their eggs in dry soil so that is a great way to help get rid of fungus gnats and that leads me to my third tip which is to stop overwatering your plants so like I said, they like to live in very moist soil. So of course, sometimes we do have plants that like their soil moist, but for other plants, let's just stop being water happy and allow your plant to dry out more thoroughly in between waterings. And if you struggle with overwatering, you might want to invest in a moisture meter or a water meter, and you can simply just place it in your soil and it will let you know whether or not your, your plant is wet or dry. Here I have my moisture meter in the soil of my bird of paradise plant. And as you can tell from the meter, it is quite dry. So now is the perfect time to give my bird of paradise a drink. And not before that, because we don't want root rot and we don't want fungus gnats. And where are we now? Third, fourth, my fourth tip is neem oil. So they have neem oil that comes concentrated or you can easily find it in a spray bottle. I will link my favorite kind below. I got mine from Amazon. And so you can just simply spray your soil. You can soak the soil thoroughly. And then when the uh, fungus gnats eat the soil, they will be consuming the neem oil and it will um, kill them and um, keep them from reproducing. The fifth thing we will be talking about to get rid of these fungus gnats for good 
is a little thing I like to call mosquito bits. So there are a couple different ways you can use mosquito bits. The instructions say for you to just sprinkle it on your soil. Um, but I found that sprinkling on the soil causes mold, which is a fungus, which attracts fungus gnats. So I don't know. I, I don't like that way. Some people have um, mixed it in their soil, but I read the Amazon reviews and one of the top reviewers said that he liked to make like a, uh, a, a mosquito bit tea. So he boils the water, he lets the fungus, oh, I keep saying fungus nest, he lets the mosquito bits soak in the water. So it makes like a tea. Of course, you want to make sure that it cools off before you continue to use it. But after it's cooled off, you're just gonna put it in your watering can and you are going to water your plants like normal. So um, they will continue to eat what is in the soil and over the next couple of weeks, they will die off. And so you wanna make sure that you are doing this through the life cycle of two weeks. That way you can make sure that you get any larva or anything that is left in the soil. All right, so here I have my boiling water and I am going to make my mosquito bit tea. So I'm going to let that cool off for however many hours until I remember it and then I will be watering my plants with that. So of course, if you have a lot of plants, you will need to make a lot of mosquito bit tea. The next tip I have is to use those little yellow, little, those little yellow sticky drops. Now you can buy some, they're very inexpensive, but I make my own. I went to Dollar Tree, I got me some yellow folders and that way I can cut them up. I got yellow folders and I got some sticky paste and that way I can make as many as I want. I can make different sizes. So if I want them to be inconspicuous because I want to make them small, I can do that if I want. So that's like the cheaper way to go, but I will link both options in the descriptions. It's one description. I'll link both options in the description. So let me show you how I make it. Okay, so to make your DIY sticky traps, you just want to cut a couple, uh, a couple strips. Like so. And then I just make like a tent. You can make a tent like so, or you can make like a little triangle. It's up to you. Okay, that was a fail. Disregard that. <laughs> Disregard that. We are just going to make a triangle like so. And so what you do is you take your uh, Tangle Trap sticky coating. It's a little sticky. You're going to need to wash your hands afterwards. And you just want to coat it, basically. Coat it on both sides if you'd like. I'm making a mess. Don't let this uh, deter you guys. <laughs> you could clean up the mess after. You'll be happy when the fungus gnats are gone. So you're gonna coat both sides like this. So after you coat your little sticky trap, you can just place it in the soil. And this is also a good way to gauge which are your problem plants. So you put your sticky trap in the soil and then you wait like a day or a couple hours, like depending on how bad it is, you can come back in like a couple hours and it might be like crazy. So that's another thing I like to do is use the sticky traps. And um, like I said, this one, you can make them as big or as small as you want. And also when you can customize them, if you have smaller pots, you can make them um, different sizes. You can also just like stick it inside here if you want. Like, I don't know, you can get, you can get creative with it. But that's just um, another thing you can do. Or you can just simply buy the ones that you can get off of Amazon. The next tip I have for you is to use hydrogen peroxide. Now, hydrogen peroxide has a couple 
uh, benefits you can use for your plants, but it is not something that you should use all the time, no more than twice a year. Um, you can use hydrogen peroxide to help with root rot, um, but, and of course, in our case, we are using it for fungus gnats. So, um, Hmm, what do I want to say? Oh, so to use hydrogen peroxide, you want to use one part water. So I got a cup here and then one part hydrogen peroxide. And I usually get my hydrogen peroxide from the Dollar Tree. So I keep it on deck because it's also good for like mealy bugs and um, making uh, fungicide or pesticide, which I will go over as well. Um, so I keep my hydrogen peroxide on deck. But after you have made your hydrogen peroxide mixture, you are going to pour it into a plant that you believe is struggling with the fungus gnats. And I think it's cool, like you can hear it as it goes in and like has a little sizzle. And so it's also going to aerate the soil, which is going to keep the soil from being uh, overly saturated and overly moist. You, you see, I also have the... Um, mosquito bits in there. So yeah, don't be afraid to double up on these efforts because they got to go. And I still might even hit this with some neem oil later on. Not today, of course. We don't want to overdo it. All right. And that's how you use the hydrogen peroxide solution to get rid of fungus gnats. All right. Of course, I have lost track of what number tip we are on. But I still know what we're doing and we are handling these fungus gnats. Now, if you have ever poured water on your plants and watch the fungus gnats just fly out, it's, it's an issue. So this is one of those plants, um, my dumb cane. So this is one that I need to make sure that I bottom water from now on. But I'm going to top this one with sand. So let me take, let me take the plant out firstly. All right, I'll put this down here. Okay, so I'm going to top the soil with sand. I already have some mosquito bits in here. Let me take out these dry leaves. All right. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to top this, lay this soil with sand and the sand is, um, going to keep the fungus gnats from a getting back down to the soil to lay their eggs to um, repeat their um, their life cycle and the second thing is it's going to keep the ones that are already in there from getting out now this is not a hundred percent some people have stated that they still have fungus gnats coming out of the sand as well but that's why it's good to combine methods. It's good to use the sand to coat, which I'm out of sand, y'all. Got to get some more sand. Um, use the sand to coat the top along with bottom watering. And then after you finish, you can even go ahead and add you a sticky trap in there. Just so anything that escapes the sand or anything that's trying to get back in the sand, you can catch it there. So, sand. The next tip I have to get rid of fungus gnats in your house plants is to make a DIY pesticide, AKA fungicide. So it has a dual purpose. Now I'm gonna insert another video here cause I already made it and I'm not about to make it again, but I do have some already in a squirt bottle for, um, uh, I don't know words y'all. I have some in a, in a squirt bottle already that I'm going to use, but I'm gonna go ahead and insert the video so you can see how I make it. Okay. Let's focus here. Where are we? Okay, so next I am going to put together this recipe that I saw from another YouTuber, which is a um, pesticide and a fungicide. And I like using things around the house because I don't want to leave the house unnecessarily if I don't need to, especially during COVID. So I like that I pretty much have everything I need right here. I also have neem oil. Um, so when I run out of that, this is a, another good go-to. So I'm going to take one and a half teaspoons. I'm going to eyeball this because I don't like getting out another uh, measuring cup or tablespoon. Um, one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. I have a 
Arm and Hammer here. Um, then you want two tablespoons of dish soap. I'm just gonna pump that in there. Oh, I meant to say, first you wanna start with one quart of water. So let's try to get all the soap off of there. And then two tablespoons of dish soap. And the recipe calls for um, vegetable oil, but I don't have any. So I'm gonna use uh, coconut oil, which is another good um, uh, bacterial, it fights bacterial, uh, bacteria. So put a teaspoon of that. This is like a table, or is this a tablespoon? Tablespoon, and we're gonna mix it up. It would help if I had warmed up the coconut oil first. But I'm just going to stir all of this in here and mix it really good. Now the recipe doesn't call for it, but I like to add a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in there as well, because that's also good for uh, fungus and pests. So I'm gonna add, let's open up a new one. Add some peroxide. Peroxide is a good go-to for uh, bacteria. So just how I keep the hydrogen peroxide on deck. All right, so add that a little bit, a little bit of that in there and mix that in. Next, you want to put it inside of a spray bottle. So this is the neem oil that I usually use um, for preventative measures. And even after something has already gone down, like some fungus gnats or uh, mealybugs or whatever, but when I run out of this, that's when I go to my, my homemade recipe. So I am clearly out of this because I have a lot of plants, so it is a lot to keep having to buy this. So I'm going to just pour my mixture, hopefully I don't make a mess, into this bottle. You see my coconut oil is getting stuck because I should have melted it first. But you know what? I'm gonna just add some hot water into this coconut oil and melt it right quick. And give it a good shake. And now we're ready. So next what you wanna do is get you a good bin. I probably should even have a mat on the outside of this just to prevent uh, spray and water getting everywhere especially when i have so many plants to do i usually use my uh my kids little swimming pool and i put a bunch of plants in there but you want to spray all the leaves you want to do underneath sorry if you can't see you want to get underneath the leaves and on top and you can spray in the in the soil too so that'll kill anything that's in the soil I also have a uh, copper fungicide that um, somebody at the nursery told me that you can rinse your soil with that and it'll kill whatever. So I might even run that through there. I just don't want to run it. Well, right now the soil is too wet, so I don't want to just give it so much moisture because then, you know, I might be prone to root rot. So I'll probably wait a couple days and then on the next watering, I'll go ahead and run the fungicide through the soil and then rinse that out. So briefly touched on this earlier, but cinnamon is another great way to fight your fungus gnat problem in your house plants. So cinnamon is a anti-fungicide. Am I saying that right? Um, it helps fight bacteria and fungus. And of course, that's what the fungus gnats like. So to use your cinnamon, all you're gonna do is lightly sprinkle it on the soil and the aroma is amazing. So it will have your house smelling good while keeping those fungus gnats away. Now, I personally would not just only use cinnamon and call it a day. Like, I feel like I need to use a com combination of all of these methods. Ugh, I'm old. Hope y'all didn't hear my knees pop when I got up. But ground cinnamon. You can take pencil shavings and sprinkle them over top of your plants. Word on the streets is sprinkling pencil shaving dust on your plants gets rid of all sorts of bugs and pests like 
fungus gnats, mealybugs, and spider mites. They don't like the wood shavings and most pencils are made from cedar wood so it is a good bug repellent. Last tip is to make apple cider vinegar traps. Now this is my least favorite one because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But for this, you want to mix some apple cider vinegar. It must be apple cider vinegar, not white vinegar. Apple cider vinegar and some dish soap in a glass or cup and cover it with um, saran wrap and then poke some holes. Not too big holes, the holes need to be small. That way the gnats can get inside but they can't get out. Um, so like I said, sometimes it works, sometimes it does not. Um, mostly for me it does not. But a bonus tip is to just leave your cup of coffee around because they, they flock to your coffee. <laughs> they flock to your sugary drinks and uh, like, make sure if you're leaving stuff around that you are looking before you drink your stuff. Also, um, just random cups of water. Sometimes I have vessels of water placed throughout my house to help with the humidity. I also have that video, so go ahead and check that video out. I will link it in the description. But back to what I was saying, I have um, certain glass vessels laying around the house, and sometimes I will find fungus gnats. They're just attracted to the moisture. So those are all my tips on how to get rid of fungus gnats. I need you guys to wish me luck. I need to be on this because I'm tired, okay? I'm tired of them in my face all the time, in my cups of coffee. They got to go. So what are your favorite tips for getting rid of fungus gnats in your house? Leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy planting.